I've I've had so many like twenty four hour nights, you know, uh, going nonstop because I my passion for what I do, my love for what I do, and I want to reap the benefits of my my work, like my labor, like that's important to me. And you realize it's just you're just so much more empowered when you do have ownership. Like you can't tell me, because <laughs> you can't tell. Like they can't tell me what to do because I own it. Yeah. Like you can't like. And you can't take that from me. And Let's you CC won't out. take it Let from her me. Out. Let her out. She outside. <laughs> You're listening to R&B Now on Apple Music One. I'm Nadaska, joined right now by the beautiful Sierra. We're here to play music from her new EP. It's called Cece. You are literally glowing. Uh-huh. How are you feeling? Thank you. I'm feeling amazing. Cece in the house. <laughs> um, no, I'm feeling really good. My baby was kicking my butt this morning, and I was like, come on now, baby. <laughs> Get it together. I was got getting work to do. nauseous and all kind of weird stuff, but I'm so happy to be here to talk to you about CC. I actually want to start on a more personal note. I realized when you started rolling out music again recently, you kept talking about joy, mm-hmm. joy and happiness. And I think that most people maybe don't necessarily realize that you actually have to pri- prioritize feeling joy in your life because oh, yeah. no matter how successful you are, how beautiful you are, there's you can always be wanting more. Mm-hmm. So why has it been so important to you to share this like need to just have an experience joy with your fans? You know, it, it definitely is a personal desire of mine. I think I just don't like feeling like I'm carrying weight in life like I don't like heaviness like even on my toughest days like you have to go through your toughest days but I hate the feeling that comes with those days so I'm like how do I get to joy how fast can I get to joy so that's kind of my internal mantra that I've lived by and I I think sometimes maybe to a default I focus on joy that I don't really really carry the weight of what something like when something's really not the best or like heavy Because I'm so focused on joy, I don't think I'm living in a reality of what's going on. So I'm like, oh, we'll figure it out. Like, it's going to be fine. Like, you know, even though it's like, oh, oh, this is like 911. That's kind of my mentality. And there's just something about that feels really healthy to me. Like, it's good for my mental state to to get to joy. It's good for me as a mom to get to joy. Because my kids, heavens knows, (laughs) them babies is turned up, you know, but... Also, just to be the support of my family for my husband and what he does. Joy is so important to me as like who I am in my house. Right. But also as my and I, as I work with my team, like I think that joy is infectious. Like it's just something so necessary about it. And I made a mo- I made a lot of this project when I was in the pandemic. We needed joy. We did. We needed love. We, did. we needed all kind of stuff, right? So for me, I was like. I just like how fast can you get to joy? Like it's kind of like a, a thing for me. So I'm just really committed to that philosophy. And it's my go-to in any of my toughest and challenging moments. And even when life isn't so crazy, I'm just, I just want to live life full of joy. That's incredible. How fast can we get to joy? I think that's really a mantra to live by. Have you always been that way? You've look, we're gonna talk about you celebrating a 20 year anniversary coming up next yeah. year for goodies, which is incredible because I still remember where I was, you know, when that album dropped and the songs were playing. You've been through a lot in the industry. Have you always had this positive outlook where you were trying to get to joy or did it take you some time to get there? For the most part, I've always been that girl that loves to laugh. I love um good times. I love positivity. I've always kind of been that way. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not like a new discovery within myself but I think more so the intentionality of it like when you go through things in life and you gain that wisdom you start to be very very intentional because you learned from like you know the past mistakes or things things that you've gone through you're like okay I'm going to commit to joy because sometimes people can bring you down like sure they can. if you like hold on to situations and at certain times in your life when you're going you just you can it can just really get you down you know what I mean like so for me I'm like I'm going to commit to joy because I already know what's going to happen if I focus on what they're saying you know what they're telling me in a situation so I had to work on that part because before like if there was an issue or something happening I feel like the whole world has to stop to deal with an issue and it's like sometimes those issues can wait so you kind of start to learn how to compartmentalize and one of my biggest things I say right now is like mental compartmentalization how can you like because for me, I have so many moving parts in my world. Like, well, again, from my personal, like, family Let life to work. Let me help you, work. mom, wife, entrepreneur, <laughs> musician. You know what I mean? Yes. The, the list is endless. Yes. And I can imagine it gets overwhelming trying oh. to juggle all of those things. Yeah, so it's like, and if you can imagine in all those spaces, like, you're going to face challenges. Man, this is some serious wisdom right now. Thank you so much for that. I think a lot of us need that. And so I've loved seeing you share the music, seeing you dance, just have fun. You're right. We needed a lot of that. And you know what? We want to know who CC is. I feel like we all 
no Sierra, yeah, maybe we think we know you better than, you know, we should because we've been in your business for so long at this point. But, you know, we had the self-titled album, Sierra. We had Sierra, The Evolution. Who mm-hmm. is Cece? Well, you know, I'm not going to say Cece. She's not, an, it's not an alter ego. It's me. It's like, but when I get a little more gritty and, you know, I say, is that, put that stank in that thing. And my lip turn, that lip turn up. Because <laughs> all my fans over the years, they'd be like, go Cece, go Cece, go. And there's just something about when they start doing that, like it's an attitude and an energy that comes out of me. And it's me, but it's like just me to the 10th power. Like it's like, but it's she's fearless, you know. Like I always say, Sierra, she's kind of more like unbothered and she keeps it kind of like, you know, chill. But Cece, she wants to smoke at times. Like, but I don't really let Cece out. I'm just going to say this. My fans know I'm pretty consistent with like, let me just stay on a joy train, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are times where I'm like, I mean, really? Like, I really, like, I could come back with a couple. I'm not going to do it, but that's you gotta like. You got to let it loose sometimes, yeah. every once in a while. Yeah, every once. Every once in a while is key, right? Once in a while, right? But not every time. Um, but no, I mean, CC is me. Again, it's not another person, but it is like, it's just an energy that I connect to. And, you know, since I was a little girl, little CC, you know, to get CC, look at she over there dancing. Like, you know, <laughs> that's just who I've been is my nickname and my fans I think have adopted the energy of what that is and it's so powerful when I look at footage from like years you know years ago and up until now and they always would be they go go see see like they'll say Sierra at different points like Sierra, Sierra. that's always sweet but they always come go see see go and I start popping that thing and <laughs> dropping that thing and it's just all that good stuff I love it as a fan of music when I think back to albums so your first album for example It always invokes such strong memories, right, of where I was in life, what I was going through at that point. And I think only music can do that. But I'm not sure if it works the same for you as the artist. So when you're thinking back to all of your albums and up to the EP now, Cece, when you think of each project, does it bring back the memories of those moments to you? Oh, yeah. Well, I say music marks time. Mm -hmm. Like for me, especially because I do have like mommy brain is real. But I think just like when you meet so many people and do so many things, you can forget a lot. But music helps you to mark time. So, yeah, it does. Um, you know, there's, I have nostalgic, you know, feelings at different points in my life, um, where there was something before my music that inspired me from day one, or just like going back to like certain feelings I had in the beginning or certain projects. Um, and I think music has allowed me to do that, you know, and you can't, I can't remember everything fully in every era of what I've done, but there's like key moments. Like I can remember when I'm in the studio recording, you know, certain songs, like, or the energy that I was on. Like, for example, I was bringing, I've been bringing up my high tap, high tops, like super strong. And I was saying to the squad how, you know, back in the days, the boxing boots were my, I could not leave the house without my high top. If you guys look at my old photos, you'll see, I always had those high top boxing like shoes. And that was like my thing. And I can remember moments like that. So, you know, for me, music does mark time too. And it marks it from a personal perspective because it's a journey that I've gone on, you know, as an artist and like the evolution of myself and just like you can't help but like have those reminders, you know, at different points. And the music does help me to remember things that I think I, I want to and I need to remember. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned that you recorded CC during the pandemic. Yes. Listen, that was hopefully a once in a lifetime experience. Oh, my God. For all Please, of us. Lord. No one could have predicted that. No one could have seen it coming. And I feel like we all had to adjust and be in those moments. So what do you think your memories will be, you know, when we're talking five years from now of how you were feeling at the time that you were actually recording CC and going through this pandemic, us all together, really, but also isolated? Oh, it's crazy because I was actually pregnant in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my love. I'm like, what is the trend here we have going on? Because now I'm pregnant releasing my project, which is like different for me, too. So I think that um, is it different. I think it's different. I've, I've delivered a project, but like not introducing it. I recorded Level Up when I was pregnant, too. So, okay. you know, I think there's power to live in your life. How about that? <laughs> um, but I do think that when we look like when I look out five years from now, I think I'm going to be so proud of the journey. You know, I'm doing this thing independently, mm-hmm. which is a whole different animal. And my first time I started my independent journey was with Level Up. And um, I think I just, for some reason, I don't know what it is, something about when I'm carrying, I feel like super like fired up and I, I feel super determined to like go to the next level. So my hopes is that, again, to your point, we don't have another pandemic moment. Right. I'll look back on this journey and be proud of how far I've come. Like I believe in speaking life. I always say that when you speak, you have a chance to tell your life stories to say great things. So a lot of my life I've spoken into existence, like whether it's writing down on a goal sheet from day one, um, the career that I wanted to have and that I wanted to do music. And I was committed to that goal when I was like 14 years old to um, just a lot of things that happened in my life. So I'm going to speak life right now. So when we run the tape back, 
<laughs> it's going to be super crazy. Amazing. I don't know if there's going to be another baby in that picture. <laughs> but uh, Why not? How big can the family get? I'm just saying. <laughs> I, somebody needs to come get Russ just real quick. Just, just hold him for two seconds, okay? <laughs> just give me a couple more years. I'm like, I look at you and I'm like, you know, when I listen to the album, big. there's a couple baby making joints on this album. So who do there's you have to blame but yourself? You look at me like that again. We're going to make, make another, another kid. kid. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Oh, my him. gosh. But he, he looked at me like that again. He looked at me. <laughs> and I was like, and then my stomach got big. And that's just how it goes. At least when this baby grows up, you know, they could play back the project and they'll know. That's I'm just saying, they'll know where things, you know, things beautiful things from. happen in this season of life. So when you got in and started recording um, the EP, what was the starting point for you? You know, my, I have to give love to my friend Teron, who I um, executive produced this project with. Um, we actually did Level Up together. We did also my song I Bet together. With this project, we really wanted to be intentional. And we really talked about R&B being super important to us. Um, and when you talk about CC, like CC to me, when you say that's CC, that that's some, that is some strong core R&B. And I always, you know, the, for lack of better terms, I always say my music was ghetto pop, like it's records I could play <laughs> in the hood and beyond. And we wanted to make sure we, we had those core elements with my fans. You know, I think they always want from me. Mm -hmm. And it does have a strong, you know, R&B bass, but it's, you know, it's music for everyone. So we talked about that vision and, you know, what that meant sonically, what that meant lyrically. We kind of live in this interesting culture where, um, <laughs> what do they say, toxicity is like a thing. I'm like, you know, the thing with toxicity to me is like toxic things can kill you mm -hmm. from my perspective. Right. So um, you think about the heaviness of just like everything is like to me, it's very de it's a lot of depressing like energy that I hear through music. I'm not saying anything, anything wrong with that because people express themselves how they want to. But for me, I just wanted to like I want to live in a joyful place. And I know I say that a lot, but we talked about that. Like we talked about party energy. We, mm -hmm. you know, there's a song I have called Type of Party or How We Roll. Like this is kind of that basement house party um, energy, like, you know, an uh, underground house party kind of vibes, you know, and for, we want to really tap into that. I really wanted to move a purpose on this project. And not that I don't do that on every project, but there was something about this one for me. I'm like, I want for my fans to be proud of the work that I've done. I want for my day ones to be proud of it. I want for the new ones to enjoy the ride with me, you know, come have a good time with me. But we were very, very intentional with this this process. I feel that. And you never have to apologize for talking about joy. We just need more of it everywhere. You could just stand up and have scream enough. it and shout it. Yeah. Because you're right. It's like there's been a lot of like heaviness we've had to deal with. So listening to this project from top to bottom, that's how I feel. I just feel good. Yeah. And not many things that are good for you can make you feel that way these days yeah. so you know we, we appreciate that it's and it was nice music. to see you work with chris brown on this you guys worked yeah. together once years ago i think 14 years ago at this yeah. point so how did it feel to reunite with him on this song this was so much fun and kind of crazy and also the process was cute because we were both like sitting down like we you know years well last year we were rehearsing for a performance and you know just from that start and i played him a few I actually when we were in rehearsals i played him a couple records and then i was like because we like we want to we want to make something happen. Like now is the time to make it happen. Like we got to make it happen finally, right? So I play play him a couple of songs, and then but I play him how he roll, and then he goes, "You already played me what I, what I needed to hear. That was it right there, right?" And so he's like, "That's the one," which was amazing. But then also what was really cute about the process, we were sitting down on the floor talking about our journey, and it's crazy that now we have little babies running around. Like that's kind of like. It's hilarious in its own kind of way because we were babies when we first started. So going from being little babies to having beautiful babies, there were really sweet things like on the behind the scenes or the in, but the, the behind the scenes part of it all or the real life part of it all that was really really fun. Everything was very easy. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, it's right when it's easy, um, and that's how it's been from recording the record to getting in the rehearsal hall together. Like it was just super fun. We were like two little kids, like excited for. A moment that we always wanted to make happen and you could feel the energy in the room like the dancers brought crazy energy we were creating our breakdown together like on the fly which i thought was really cool because that was when the dancer came out of us and the dancer in us was really out in the room and we were like literally like okay what do we do like this we do like this like, <laughs> like that you know it was all of that good stuff like that felt really raw and it's like i think when we both love the art of music right i think there was just true, like, I think for us as artists, we really got to go on that process that you always want to, like, even down to the creative of the video. I feel like it made sense at some point that we had to see you guys do this, Good. you know, so, like, thank you for finally putting that record together. Thank I think you. We needed that. Thank you so much. And I got to say thank you to everyone showing love. Like, 
I know I talk about the power of independence and running my own label, but it does really feel really good to have all the love and to see all the streaming love that's happening and the creates of the video and mm -hmm. to see like we've been, you know, um, our video has been trending for some time now past the first week of release. It's pretty awesome. Like I feel really proud of that. And I know we're just getting started. So yeah, that's how we roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what influenced your decision to be independent you're a huge artist mm -hmm. right i think you have a lot at your disposal so that's not a choice you necessarily had to make right yeah. but you launched your label beauty marks you dropped a couple albums already and now we're up to the ep yeah why did you make that decision and how has it felt in the years since well actually i've done one album beauty marks which is the first project and my company is called beauty marks entertainment and I say all the scars you get from the obstacles you face in life are your beauty marks. Mm -hmm. That's my theme behind that title. Um, and then now, like you said, my EP. Um, I think independence was important for me because after a while, like I was probably in the system, like the traditional major recording systems for like 15 years in my career. So as you can imagine, that was like stepping out independently was like exciting, but it was also kind of like, ooh, like I feel naked. <laughs> like, ooh, I've never been in this situation before. Like, ooh, it's all on me. Like, now I got to build my team. It's just a whole like process, um, you know, that I had to go through. But I was kind of like, I kept saying from my frustration of feeling like my hands were tied at points that whenever I get the chance to do this, do this all by myself or do it on my own and have more control, I can't wait for that moment. And it's crazy because before I put out Level Up, that moment happened actually faster than I, I was like literally speaking life. Like I was legit telling Russ at home, like, man, I just want to do this myself. Like, because I was getting frustrated with like, at that time, I was signed to a label, and I was actually pregnant when I did my deal with the label, which is crazy. <laughs> and there was one CEO in, one CEO out, one president. Like, it was so much rotating, the rotating of the guards kind of game. And I'm like, this is just frustrating. And before that, before I signed my last deal, I actually was doing a deal with a partner that I really wanted to do a deal with. And they reneged on me and my deal. Like, on the day I was about to, the day before I was going to sign, they reneged on me. I don't think I've ever said this wow. publicly. Before I signed with my last recording uh, deal that I was in. And at that point, I'm like, I don't like this feeling. Like, that was I'm the like, sign. Yeah, I was like, ah, they playing with me. Like, I don't like feeling like folks are controlling what I'm supposed like, my destiny. And like, eh. There's only one power for me that controls my world, and that's my, my Heavenly Father. That's God for me. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to be in this. Like, I can't do it this way. Like, I've got to be able to at least put my best foot forward and know that I can control it as best as I can. But knowing that when I put my best foot forward, I'm betting on myself, like, all chips are in, and it's really going to be, it's going to, it's just different. Like, I've been there before where I betted on myself, and the system didn't, and it's also, like, you know, it's like I, I invest a lot of money and then they're over there like, we don't really know. And then like, bump your opinion. Like if I would have lived my life based on other people's opinions, I would never be where I am today. Right. Right. That's like me just believing from day one. So this opportunity was um, exciting. So I said I had a meeting with the at the time that CEO that was I don't like saying names. I don't want to you know, I'm not trying to call anybody out right now. But <laughs> um, CC, you know, I'm not going to be <laughs> CC. Come out. She's going to come out. But anyways, at that time, the person that was running the company, I met with him. He was new and it was almost like he made up his mind before I met with him that he wasn't going to work my project. And I went in like excited, like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I got this song called Level Up, da 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 da. Like, I had the video, like everything. And then he like legit like, looked at me like, yeah, it's great, you know, amazing, like generic, like salt, like, uh, what is those it? Uh, bland, executive, yeah. like bland words. So then he, you know, kind of wasn't feeling my direction of my project or he wasn't feeling it. And I'm like, this is the moment. Like, I'm like, this is crazy. I was talking about this a few weeks ago, and now the moment has come. So, it was one of the most disappointing days and one of the, the best days to happen right behind that. It's amazing that you noticed that then because I realize sometimes in life, those disappointing days, you don't realize sometimes till months or years later that you needed that disappointment oh my gosh. to put you on the right path. I'm telling you, sometimes like the moments where, you know, you feel like they're the worst could be the best moment for you. Like, and that's where there isn't a business decision or a life decision. Like, if you walk by faith, there's always something great on the other side. That's how my life has been. Like, I've always walked by faith, not by sight, you know. So in that moment, I took a big leap of faith, and I'm like, I'm going for this thing. I asked for my master's back. He gave it to me for free. So he really didn't believe in what I was doing. So, you Did know. that guy, yeah. So now we sit here after my, my Beauty Marks project and Level Up is now um, two times platinum. And that project is literally just a few listens away from being gold. So keep on streaming Beauty Marks, guys. <laughs> um, and then, as you said, I'm, I'm releasing my next project, my EP. And so um, I just feel I feel 
better doing it my way fully. And I also, I love my team. You know, there's no I team. I can't do it by myself. But there's something really cool knowing that I was able to handpick the squad that's with me and that they're just as passionate as I am. And there's a different investment, I think, in the way that we all work together because we're small but mighty. Right. But I can feel how proud my team is of all of our little wins. Like sometimes you got to appreciate the little wins in life. And a little win for us is a big win, right, as a, little, as a small little company, an independent company. So it just feels right. And for some reason, every time I try to, like, work in the big systems, it just not saying that all it I had some great moments now we know that but at this phase in my life and my career it just wouldn't work how I you know it just wouldn't work fully right and I think that again was another sign so this whole chapter has been the chapter of ownership for me right ownership is important ownership and I don't is think we huge and it's not an easy like path to go oh down. my gosh no but you know the thing is is that I, I bust my butt like I have I've had so many like 24 hour nights you know uh, going nonstop because I my passion for what I do, my love for what I do, and I want to reap the benefits of my my work, like my labor, like that's important to me. And you realize it's just you just so much more empowered when you do have ownership. Like you can't tell me because <laughs> you can't tell like they can't tell me what to do because I own it. Yeah, like you can't like and you can't take that from me and Let you CC won't out. take it Let from her me. Out. Let her out. She outside. <laughs> she outside. But she don't get it all. But oh, yeah, man. So yeah. I'm, I'm really happy for you. Congratulations. I, I know it's like there are challenges along the way, but it's all worth it. And then we get dope music at the end. Because so one of my favorite songs on the project on CC is BRB. I don't feel oh, like yes, an exec. Yes, yes. I don't feel like an executive would have let mm. this one fly. This like Jersey club mm. bounce. Like I didn't expect that. What a dope record. Mm. I love that song. So I love that, you know, you speak about it that way. It's energy. It's, you know, the idea of how like, you know, I think about like, you know, it's like when you have to travel and you and your love have to like, you know, like rock and roll. They got to do their thing, you got to do your thing or whatever it is. Like, I'll be right back. Like, I hope you miss me when I'm gone kind of thing. You know what I mean? So and I don't want the time to be too long kind of thing. Um, but it's also fun to be like BRB, like just real quick. BRB, BRB. The project just has a really nice flow, right? We get just some pure, just beautiful R&B joints. You know, and then those more up tempo. You have little baby on here as well. Yes. Nice little Atlanta connection. It's yes. nice to have him on there. And then some like little sprinkles, like on Two in Love. We were playing uh, this. We like run that back. We we're like, is that like a trick daddy? That is a trick daddy. On yes, there. that's super dope. Yes, it is a flip on that. Shout out to Tehran on that as well, because when he played me this record, like it wasn't fully complete. We completed the record together, but he had the bass. He had the nuts and the bolts of the record, and um, I was like, this right here is jam, and we just kind of played with the energy of it. Um, and it is a spin on, you know, I'm a thug <laughs> by Trick Daddy, but it's I'm too in love, it's right? Dope. And it's also kind of inspired. If you listen to the record, there's also this moment like where it's like, you know, um, what do I say? I say, um, even when I'm mad at you and thinking, why are you so sexy? Like, you know, when you're like, you can have a frustrated moment in love and you're like, but that you have that frustration, but at the same time you rec you acknowledge and you recognize you're too in love. Like there's a line where I'm saying like, get up, up out my hip, come put your hand on my shoulder, pull me closer. Like it's the moment of being there together. And I'm like, I'm so frustrated right now. <laughs> and I really don't want to like, I'm looking at your phone, my phone. I want to call you, but I don't want to call you. Like it's like that energy, but it's like, I'm too in love. So that love, like, you know, you just feel it in the record. So um, that was really fun. That was really fun making that song. So one thing I love is that you are, still so just clearly a fan of the music right you mm -hmm. know you've been doing this for some time now but like seeing you collaborate with uh summer walker on better things yeah with Lola Brooke and lady london like i'd love to see those records has the, that fan in you of the music just always been alive oh my gosh always um i've always been a believer that when you do collaborations you do it because it feels good mm -hmm. right i've never wanted to um, just be with someone because they're like to put someone on a record because they're dope like I mean because they're hot like the hottest thing mm -hmm. but because they're dope yes I love to I love working with artists um you know so working with Summer was really fun like it's crazy because she and I both from Atlanta as well and then she and I bonded because I did something on her project um I did the prayer for some, for Summer's project and then she returned the love for me as well with better things and it was a song that both of us really loved which was really cool nothing better than that again mm -hmm. like when artists say like this is what i'm vibing and you're like i thought that was for us too it was amazing so it was super easy and fun and um summer is really funny but it was really fun working working with her and we've become like really good friends over time which has been awesome and then on the girls um that record for me was really about um even better things too but the girls also was about female empowerment for me. Like, I really believe in female empowerment. I'm going to always, like, stand for that. 
um, and working with Lady London and Lola Brooke, I love because I think those are two amazing up and coming yep. artists that have their own viewpoint and that um, they're just special. Like Lady London, she's just bars after bars. When you listen to her online, like when when you would see herself online, just like the stuff she would say would be like so poetic. And then she's also like so beautiful, but like so clear on her vision. I'm like, she fly, you know. <laughs> and then um, Lola, I mean, she's the cutest thing. And she's hilarious, too. Like that girl is really funny. Um, but she again, like these like being around these girls, it was so cool because you could like you could tell they knew who they were. Like I could appreciate that about them, that they were very clear on their vision and they're just getting started. And. They also, like, they got some attitude, some bite to them, some, like, hunger to them. And I really love that. And I also love celebrating my my queens. I, I love celebrating the up-and-coming queens. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. That's like when Missy reached to me when I was a little baby. She celebrated me at yeah. the beginning of my career. And that was so important to me. And one of the best songs in my career that we've had together. We want to grab me off one of our songs together. Um so that's important. I think we got to do that. I think mm -hmm. we have to do it as much as we can. And it was also organic. Like they brought the light to the girls and helped me tell the story even better, um, you know, in reference to how I wanted to, to really tell the story of the record because it really was about female empowerment. Like people talked about the line, don't need no man. It's like, no, no, no. Not I'm not saying I don't. Missing the point. You're missing the whole course, point. It's like, course. no, no, no. Trust me. I need Russ, the strong arms to help me do a lot of things in my <laughs> house, you know, or there's a lot of things we put our heads together on where he is, I, I feel like I can do certain things without him, just to be honest. But it's also speaking to a woman's capability. Right. It's like there's been times before when I was like I bought people, my fans I was always going to talk about it, but I was doing it by myself mm -hmm. at one point in time. Right. You know, even as an independent, like running a label, like there's power to what we can do. Right. You know, and so I just wanted to speak to the life, to that that part of us and celebrate that part of us, because um, there's nothing better than when a female has her independence. Right. There, I think there's something very fly about it. I think there's something very respectful about it. I think it's something very necessary about it. Like you need to have that. You got to have like confidence in who you are and don't let, don't depend on nobody to like validate who you are. Right. I think that's important. So the girls allow me to kind of express that in that record. So it was yeah, really fun. I love it. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, you're iconic to us. So seeing you pay it forward and like touch these new generations of artists and you guys work together. I hope we get more and more of that. It's been incredible to to watch your journey and to to be a fan, you know, experience these moments with you. So congratulations on the new project. And I feel like I have to say happy hip hop 50 to you too. So oh, obviously hey. R&B to me, it's, it's all hip hop, right? Yeah. And you're a part of this culture that I grew up in. Like you're part of like my memories, you know what I mean? I so I think, I hope like you feel like you're also a part of the celebration because you really are. Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your words. I appreciate this time. And, you know, it's been a blessing to me to have worked with some of the best rap artists in the history of music, you know, people like Luda, Missy Elliott, um, you know, Nicki Minaj and more. Um, you know, I, I feel so fortunate that I've been able to, you know, merge hip hop into my music. You know, it says R&B, hip hop, pop, all that good stuff. Um, so I appreciate <laughs> your, uh, your, your, your words. They mean a lot to me. Joy and celebrations. Thank yeah. you so much, Sierra. You can stream the full project CC that is now available hey. on Apple Music. CC outside, y'all.